What's happening? Hope you're doing well. Today, uh, buckle up, because we're covering OBS basic settings. All right, so when you open up OBS for the first time, you're gonna be hit with some default settings through their auto configuration wizard. Now you can start streaming with these settings. However, we recommend you change and tweak some of these settings to get the most out of your stream. We'll also discuss the tweaks that you need to make to optimize your stream. And you can find all these menus and settings we're talking about under either OBS file settings or in the lower right-hand corner under studio mode. We will focus mainly on streaming settings for recording videos. You can find that separate article here. And we're also gonna cover and focus mainly on Twitch. However, these settings do apply to other streaming platforms. OBS general settings. So here you can change some general and useful settings for your stream. You can set a confirmation dialogue when you go live. That way you know you're not going live accidentally on Twitch when you don't mean to be. You have other options like whether your stream should be recorded directly and different settings for your sources like the default alignment and snapping. Feel free to mess around with these a bit to find what you like best for your stream. At the beginning though, really, you don't really need to change much. I would do the confirmation dialogue for starting and stopping streams. That way you have a safety net there for your streams. However, OBS runs fine on the defaults. Stream settings, stream. First, select your platform of choice through the list here and then pick which server you want to use for your connection. You'll find that there are one, just a lot of options, but two, usually multiple options that are close to you so you can find which has the best connection for you. Do some testing and experimenting. Otherwise, if you just want to hit auto, you should be good most of the time. Recently, OBS has also added different ways to connect your account outside your normal stream key. And this is really, really nice because OBS will select the settings to the respective platform based on the connected account. Otherwise, you do need your stream key, which you can find if you go to creator dashboard, settings, stream, and this guy right here, copy that into OBS. On YouTube, you can find a stream key if you go to the YouTube website from a browser and start up a live stream. And on Facebook, you can also copy the stream key when you set your live stream settings from a browser. Big note of caution, never share your stream key. Or if you accidentally show it on stream, change it right away. Otherwise, someone could grab it, plug it into their OBS and stream under your name. Not good. Also, if you are connected to Twitch, you can decide which Twitch chat add-ons you do want to see in your OBS chat. So OBS supports different encoders if you have the right technical requirements. Either you can stream via your or CPU or GPU if you have a good graphics card. By default, the encoding of your stream is gonna be done via your CPU on OBS default settings, but if you have an AMD or Nvidia card, it's definitely best to switch to those. It's important to always keep an eye on what your workload is. If you're playing a game that is already using 99% of your graphics card, streaming is gonna be difficult because an OBS is not gonna run smoothly because the game is always preferred. Try to reduce the load on your system so that you aren't reaching 99% on your game and OBS. And this applies to all systems. You can do this by closing down programs that you aren't using while you're streaming and gaming or by changing your settings and lowering them in game. If you want to change more than the existing settings under your output panel, right up here, output mode, make sure that's on advanced. And now before we talk about graphics card specs, let's talk about one more thing that's very, very important for all encoders, the bitrate. For Twitch, the CBR should be selected as the quality control method. This feature keeps the bitrate and thus the quality constant. If you're using another platform and it's not explicitly recommended, otherwise you should still be using CBR there as well. If your internet connection is strong enough for bitrate, you can select up to 6,000 kilobits per second. This is currently the highest maximum value allowed for non-partners on Twitch. However, do keep in mind that your channel will not have transcoding options available, at least at the beginning. This means that viewers will not be able to lower the quality of your stream to fit their internet needs, which unfortunately means that if your viewers do have a weaker internet connection, they might not be able to watch your stream smoothly without dealing with a lot of problems if you've chosen a bitrate too high. A bitrate of about 2,200 to about 2,500 max maximum is recommended. Unfortunately, this does lead to a worse quality stream. However, you can always change it on the fly, so you can adjust it according to your viewers if they're following your stream without any problems. For many non-partners, a stream at about 4,500 kilobits per second is what you'll mostly find. Also, do keep in mind that your game does also need some of your internet. However, not as much, so a maximum of about 80% of your total upload connection should be reserved for your stream and for OBS. First, let's look at the X264 encoder. X264 encodes your stream using your CPU. This means that your GPU isn't involved in any of the encoding process, but when should you use X264? If you're streaming and gaming on the same computer, it's not recommended to use X264 unless your CPU has 12 or more cores. However, if you're streaming just chatting in a camera or streaming a console via a capture card, go right ahead, X264 is just fine. 
With X264, you do have a stable performance if you consider all the previously mentioned points. Otherwise, it definitely could put a lot of load on your system. This is gonna result in low FPS in game and possibly on your stream as well. In most cases, it's totally fine to leave the CPU usage preset at very fast or faster. If you have a beefier CPU and you wanna bump it up a little bit, go ahead and try fast or medium. Or if you wanna lighten the load on your CPU even more, very fast and super fast are your lighter options. Do your testing though. As you go higher up on this list, your stream does does look worse, but you also get a lighter CPU load. So do your testing and see which one you can and want to land on. The rest of these settings you can leave like you see here on screen with the bitrate you can mess around with a little bit, keeping in mind the things we covered in that section. NVIDIA NVENC is also available for encoding if you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your PC. However, the graphics card also has to support the encoder. This isn't the case for every NVIDIA card though, it does depend on the generation. Luckily enough, it is really easy to check under output if you go to your encoder and you have H.264 under the NVENC option, you can stream with your NVIDIA GPU. Now the NVIDIA NVENC encoder on Turing based NVIDIA cards, which is the 20 series, the 1660, the 1660 Ti, as well as everything newer, if you're lucky enough to have your hands on one of those, have about the same encoding quality as X264 medium. If you have a GPU with older architecture, Pascal or Kepler, you're looking at about X264 super fast and fast. So when should you use this graphics card? Well, if you wanna play and stream on the same PC, then this encoder is a good choice. First, you have good quality with NVIDIA NVENC, and second, the PC consumes less power when rendering. Also, if you wanna stream a console game using a capture card, NVIDIA NVENC is best. Only in a dual PC setup should you be considering choosing X264. If you stream on one system, but the image is coming from another, a higher bitrate is just needed. For your stream, you can make the following changes in OBS. For rate control, like we previously mentioned, set this to CBR as your quality control. For bitrate, set it as we previously described in the bitrate category. For keyframe interval, by default, this is gonna read at zero, set it to two. For preset, depending on what your graphics card can handle, quality is recommended, but if not, performance is the next best option. For profile, set this to high. This is recommended. On a rare occasion, your viewers might experience just a black screen for your stream. If that's the case, main is gonna be your next option, but you know, change it depending on what your viewers are experiencing. If you're playing slower games on stream, like Sims or Age of Empires, check the look ahead box. However, if you're playing faster games like Apex or Call of Duty, the Psycho Visual Tuning, that's the box you should check instead. Your GPU, if you're on a desktop, leave this at zero, but if you're on a laptop, change this to one of your possibly two GPUs available, that's gonna be your nicer one. And max B frames can be left alone at two. If you have an AMD graphics card installed in your system that is also supported by the encoder, it will be displayed and read in OBS as H.264 slash AVC encoder. In the quality preset, you have three options, speed, quality, and balanced. If you have a new AMD card, you can try quality. You have to adjust it according to your hardware, so just be aware of that. If you have a slow graphics card, then choose speed. The quality is worse, but of course, then the stream is gonna run smoother. Set the target bitrate like we talked about in the bitrate category. You can leave the view mode on simple here, no worries. So you wanna know more about the specs? Well, here's what you need to know. Twitch and YouTube have created their own websites for the perfect settings to show you which settings to best use for your setup. Click on each respective platform to find out more. In the audio tab, you can select your respective audio devices for your stream and perfectly match both multiple output sources or microphones. You can set a separate push to mute and push to talk button for each device and set any delays if desired. So let's run through all the categories and what you can set in each of them. Right here at the top, we have sample rate. Basically, the higher kilohertz, the better sound quality. The max is 48, set it to 48. Right below sample rate, we have channels. Here you can select if you want to hear your sound in either mono, stereo, or surround. If you're streaming on Twitch, Twitch will actually allow you to hear the stereo sound, so use that. The surround option is there if you do want to play a game and record all your surround audio channels, but just be aware that once you do upload it to like YouTube or something, it'll be converted back to stereo. With the global audio devices, you can set all your ins and outs for headsets, speakers, microphones. It's actually really cool because you can set up to four microphones to be ready at any given time, which is pretty cool. For desktop audio, choose your headset or main speakers. If you do happen to have both, you can actually set both. Desktop audio one could be your headset and desktop audio two could be your speakers. For microphones and aux audio, choose your microphone. You could have an XLR microphone, maybe a headset microphone, and you have four options, which again is great. A note here, typically if you're streaming, you do only have one microphone, but if you're running something like a podcast or 
each speaker has an individual microphone, you are gonna make sure you wanna set each individual microphone on audio one, audio two, and et cetera. If you wanna use a pair of speakers or external sound card to monitor what your stream sounds like, under advanced here, you can set a monitoring device, something you don't actually listen to though during your stream, that's an important thing. The meter settings, messing with these are just optional. They're really just there so you can see your green bars in your mixer either decay faster or slower and adjust how you want them to react. Here, if you have a good CPU, you can set the decay rate to fast and the peak meter type to true peak. Again, optional, it's not a necessary thing. At the bottom of the audio panel, you can set whether you want to enable a push to mute or push to talk hotkey for your audio sources. You can control everything from your headset to your speakers, your microphone, uh, alerts, and even overlay sounds. Many streamers also use voice meter to control the audio of their stream. This is because you can control the sound in a way that you're actually hearing something different than what your stream is hearing. It's called a submix. The base canvas resolution should always be based on the resolution of your monitor or game if you're not playing in full screen mode, if you wanna avoid any annoying borders in your stream. However, in OBS Studio, there's actually a second setting that describes the resolution in which your game will eventually be displayed to your stream, which is output scaled resolution. This means that the image is actually scaled down, which allows OBS to be more resource efficient. And that means that your stream is actually using less bandwidth on your side and your viewer side. Even among big successful streamers, there are still many who actually stream at a resolution of 1280 by 720, as this is considered more sufficient. By using the scaling filter, you can actually improve your stream quality just a bit. In most cases, Bicubic offers a good average value. However, if your computer and internet do have room for improvement, you can select the Lanxos setting. An FPS rate of 30 FPS is normally sufficient to achieve a high quality stream while saving resources. Of course, a significant increase in quality is noticeable if you can stream at 60 FPS but nowhere as near as noticeable as if you jump from 30 FPS to 60 FPS in game. It's best just to try some different settings out, stream at 30, stream at 60, see for yourself and get feedback from your viewers. All right, now let's take a look at the advanced tab. Auto reconnect can be useful when there are minor disconnections, for example, in a WLAN. OBS also offers the option of a stream delay, which causes the stream to be broadcasted with a time delay. This is especially useful if a live tournament is being broadcasted or if you want to protect yourself from fellow players watching and gaining an in-game advantage, stream sniping. Note here, if you are streaming with a delay and your stream ends, don't close OBS immediately. Otherwise, the viewers that are still watching the delayed live stream might not get to actually catch the end of it. OBS has to be open for the duration of the delay, even if you set the delay on your streaming platform. Make sure to save your stream offline for highlight videos for YouTube, just having the whole VOD to look at later since platforms like Twitch don't save them permanently. Really the only disadvantage here is that your three hour, four hour, five hour, six hour streams can certainly take up a lot of space on your hard drive. But you can also download your streams later on the platforms. Now with the replay buffer, you can actually save a recent action and show it again on stream as an instant replay at just the push of a button. And by the way, if you didn't know, you can actually involve your viewers interactively by using using boom.tv and this will allow the viewers themselves to actually create the replays, which are then replayed and showed live on your stream. It's pretty cool. Also at the end of 2021, Twitch rolled out a feature that allows you to actually rewind Twitch streams in browser for up to two minutes. Awesome. Another important point you should know is your internet connection. It's not in the OBS settings, but for streaming, it's very, very helpful and very important to know what internet connection you have. It affects the maximum quality that you can actually stream at. Your video and audio settings are directly related to your connection. The better the connection you have, the higher the bit rate and quality you can use for video and audio. An internet connection with an upload speed of about five megabits per second is gonna be good enough. You're gonna be fine there and you can actually test your internet connection speed at sites like speedtest.net. All right. All all set? Well, what's next? Of course, for a decent stream, it's not just good enough to have the basic settings. A whole bunch of other settings need to be done to create a professional look. Now, these include, for example, the appropriate sources, such as webcam, certain displays about the followers, your whole overlay and alert setup. That's very important. With OwnPro, you have many points of this already covered with just one click. So if you want to read more about OwnPro, you can click here. And for useful plugins and other sources, you can click here.